So, um, so that's where the strategy comes from. Again, developed it many years ago on the trading floor of the Chicago Mercantile Exchange. And uh, as things were transitioning into screen-based trading and all that, um, we're going to spend today's session uh, applying it to the uh, various markets. Now, I have a whole list of markets that uh, I can and, and will go over. But uh, if anyone has a market that they want to take a look at, we can certainly apply the strategy to that market. Uh, remember the... You know, the, the, the how and why prices move in any markets is all a function of supply and demand. So we apply the strategy equally to, you know, for day trading, swing trading, longer term investing, and also any asset class, stocks, futures, Forex, options, crypto. Um, all right. Yeah, it looks like someone couldn't hear, but uh, it seems fine now. So let's. Uh, let's bring up the charts here and let's dive into the live market. So, yeah, if there's any uh, if there's any markets you want to take a look at, again, we usually look at stocks, futures, forex. But again, we look at anything, um, and we can talk any market, any futures market, crypto, you name it, doesn't matter. As long as there are buyers and sellers and a, a feed from an exchange to get charts. We can we can uh, apply the supply demand strategy to it. So let me start with let's, um, why don't we start with the major equity index markets? Actually, let's start with the market that is probably uh, the most important as far as focus right now, and, and it applies to so many markets out there, and that is the dollar. Whether you're trading. The Forex markets or equity index markets or major commodity markets, um, the dollar is key. So the dollar recently, and in our in our um, in our sessions, you know, I deliver live sessions for um, for members of the Pinnacle Institute every morning, five days a week. Um, but uh, and, and one of the things we've been focused on there every day is the dollar because it actually reached a larger time frame supply zone. Okay, and as the dollar reached this larger time frame supply zone that you can see over here, the equity index markets. Take a look, uh, and we can really look at almost any of them that we want to. The equity index markets came down to here's the S&P, here's the NASDAQ. Right? You can see the same time that the dollar came up to, um, oops, supply. Whoops, let me just go over here. You can see, for example, the NASDAQ came down to our qualified demand zone. So decent drop in the dollar from that supply zone. At the same time, nice rally in the equity index markets. There's that inverse relationship. So we use the dollar for, you know, it's kind of kind of multi-purposes. Okay. Now, uh, with the dollar coming down from supply, yes, we are nearing... Um, and that demand zone is not there. Hang on a second. Let me just fix that. Whoops. I'm not sure why I can't, but uh, there we go. So a little bit lower. We have a qualified demand zone sitting here. So the dollar can certainly bounce here, and the dollar's been, you know, very strong. As you know, if you've been in these FX Street sessions with us for the last um, the last year or so. We've been very bullish the dollar simply because we've come down to our demand zones. These are all the zones we've had in here in larger time frames, right? Uh, we've come down to demand with, you know, very little supply anywhere uh, close, right? But now that we've come up to the supply zone, we're um, getting closer to this 112.25 demand below. But for the first time in a while, okay, for the first time in a while, take a look. 
we actually have, uh, let me see what time frame it's on, not that one. We actually have a, not so small time frame. Uh, we actually have a small time frame supply zone that has developed on the way down. All right, so after hitting the larger time frame supply zone, we're left a little footprint of supply sitting up here in the 114, uh, really 114.20 is where that's at right there. Yeah, okay. Which means if we do hit the demand zone and turn higher, we would expect the dollar to stop rallying here and turn lower. would also look for stock markets to be into demand zones here. There, that would be that inverse relationship with the dollar along with Forex markets against the dollar. Does that make sense? So uh, good question there. How you doing, Sam Bragg? Good to see you. Uh, how do we decide whether to take the S&P or NASDAQ? Um, so um, you know, with typically taking that type of trade in uh, through options, but uh, but it's but it, but uh, if it's futures you're talking about, either way, it, it's not so much you know wherever the zones are. Look, I guess here's what I'm getting at: the the key zones. Uh, typically show up in the same places, right? So for example here, we almost came down to our 3606 tested demand zone um, in the S&P, but didn't it? The NASDAQ did. So we have a bunch of key zones in this area. At the end of the day, the way the numbers work out, if you get, you know, you get a rally in the S&P and rally in the NASDAQ, it's not going to be all that different. Um, if you had to choose between the two, the S and P is going to be, um, you know, it's it's just it it just does come down to personal preference then, right? Nasdaq's going to be a little little more wild because of how it's set up and designed and built. The S and P is not, but at the end of the day, it's still the same supply and demand zones. So, if your specific question is if one comes into a zone and the other one hasn't gotten has it hasn't got there yet. We'll typically wait for both of those to, uh, you know, get, get to the zone. Yesterday, for example, the S&P did not reach our supply zone. The NASDAQ did. Okay. Um, it, the S&P almost got there. Now on the demand side, you can see again, the NASDAQ here has a little bit of room to go today before getting down to the, uh, that's a green line because it's a tested demand zone. Okay, there. So that was the, okay, so I think we got it. All right. Um, yeah, so so Michael, to the, the that, that dollar, that new supply zone that developed after the turn, that's going to be an inside the range uh, supply zone, which is never going to carry the same probability as an outside the range supply zone, which we hit on that larger time frame. Let me go back to that for a moment. And that's a very, very big thing. So let me go back here. Still should be fine. So we hit this outside the range larger time frame supply. <clears throat> and by the way, if the dollar went up there, we would expect another turn lower. So there's that. But then during the drop, as I just showed you, we did leave another footprint. So this would be an inside the range supply zone. It's certainly in the right location, but it's not, you know, there's there's not there's not likely to be as much supply, actual supply, right, from banks and financial institutions around the world of dollars here, as there is up in here uh, at these price levels. Okay. Of the very not like really not likely to be. It's, it's very very different number, the amount of supply here and the amount of supply sitting up here. And that whole, by the way, just because that inside the range, outside the range concept is so important. If you, if any of you want more information on uh, that or want to spend a good, you know, a good amount of time on it, um, you can always, whoops, you can always, um, join one of these, uh, I'll put the link in the chat there. You can always click on this link in the chat, and um, we spend quite a bit of time in the Advanced Trading and Investing Workshop. It's free, 
just wanted to make sure you knew about that. So spend a lot of time on here on that whole structure location concept, but that's key. And we'll spend time here as well. All right, let's keep going. Let's keep going. Um, taking which you would want to be aggressive with profit taking, Michael. Which would you, which, uh, which? And uh, yeah, Sam, it's good to have you, good to have you on board. All right. Okay, let's go back and um, look at some other markets. So let's take a look at the NASDAQ here. Okay. So getting closer and closer to uh, these lows here over the past, I think, 48 hours or so. So we'll see if the markets can get down to there. Uh, it all depends on that profit zone. So the answer to that question, let's go over here to the dollar. So for a for a euro long, right? We're going to want the dollar to be to have room to fall. So this demand zone is going to have to be taken out if you want if we want more room, right? So um, before, if, if for example, if you're looking for a bigger bigger profit zone to the upside in the euro, uh, the profit zone needs to open up a little bit more with the dollar, right? So uh, we need to, you know, let's see, uh, let's see if price can go deep into this demand zone, uh, possibly even take it out. But if it does go deep into here, and then rallies back up to either this supply zone inside the range supply zone there or revisits the outside the range supplies on up here, we'd have a much bigger profit zone at that point in a, in, uh, in the Euro. Does that make sense? Okay, yeah, we could definitely take a look at gold and um, also too in the, in the uh, pinnacle session yesterday, we did spend quite a bit of time on the, uh, on the nifty for those that watch the uh, the nifty market uh, for gold let me know if you're look if you want to see the futures or the ETF really doesn't matter to me we can start with the futures but if you want to see the the one of the ETFs like GLD just let me know all right in the let's see in the bigger picture here gold has been trading lower and and lower from uh supply but let's go take a look at the oh i'm sorry not that supply zone uh this one so any of you in that pinnacle membership we probably remember we went over this one a lot barely touched the 1697 so if you shorted here or if you are short somewhere in here just remember that these two zones are here they're on top of each other which is uh which is good for the bearish side also, we now have some secondary evidence here, meaning price just touched the zone and confirmed that there's likely to be a quite a bit of supply here, right? Okay, just gives us a little more uh, evidence. Having said that, what's equally important is, is where's the demand side? Actually, let's stick with the supply side for a moment because we also have the 1674 which is, a, now the gray circle means that's an overnight or off hours zone there. That's a supply zone, okay? We color code our supply and demand zones based on probability. Here's a very inside the range if you are short, very inside the range demand zone 1646. Remember inside the range supply and demand zones are lower probability than outside the range supply and demand zones okay so there's that and then uh, one more to look at here let's go to 100, 120 minute chart and you'll see uh this one is going to be below the range so let's go over here not those supply zones 1653 let's go look at the demand side 
go way back here. There we go. So there's an outside the range demand zone, a little bit lower, 1570. The only thing uh, stopping price from getting to the 1570 is that little inside the range demand zone that I just showed you as far as supply demand zones go. Does that make sense? Um, so watch that one. Again, notice the little bit of evidence over here that there's likely to be a pretty big supply demand imbalance here on the demand side at uh, the 1570 area. And obviously we're quite a bit higher than that at the moment. All right, and again, if, like I said before, if anyone came late to the session, if you have any markets you wanna go over, just let me know, I can, I can pull them up and we will apply the supply and demand strategy to them. Okay, let's keep going. So let's go to um, yeah, you can apply this to the any real estate indexes that you know we can get a chart on, for example. Um, but given the whole UK uh, situation, why don't we go look at the pound, which has really been on the move? I'm sure most of you know that. You know, and, and all, here's the thing, all of this news out there and everything else and all kind of the craziness going on in the world, which I guess there's always something going on, right? At the end of the day, it's just all about supply and demand. Any and all influences on price are reflected in price. Does that make sense? Okay. Any and all influences on price are reflected in price. So if we didn't know the news and didn't know anything that's going on with the economy or the dollar or the pound or anything else, and we just focused on our structure and location analysis, right, which helps identify inside and outside the range supply demand zones, um, you know, we're, we're quantifying supply and demand. In fact, the more we can have a razor sharp focus on that and, and less of a distraction on all the news surrounding it, typically the better in in a big way okay. uh, just reading back in the chat here and we'll get to the pound but oh, we can just get to the pound here I'll I'll read back as we go along all right let's take a look so if we go to yeah, you know, well, let me just go to, let's start with the big picture. And then, all right, the pound recently, um, I came up to our supply zone now, fell pretty good. So one question a lot of people have is, do we now have any, uh, any demand, right? So looking at the turn from the recent low, we had a nice demand zone here, but it's already tested. So we would probably need to take out um, some near-term supply. Now well, we may have already done that. Not not exactly. I mean, this wouldn't be a this wouldn't be a qualified zone, but uh, you know, we need to take out more supply before we have an, a new qualified uh, demand zone. I'm going to wrap some lines around this one because this does have a little bit of a profit zone with it. But what the chart is really suggesting too is that there there's even with a rally, there's still more room uh, to the downside, right? Uh, Kareem, the, the time frames we use, right? So we apply the strategy equal, equally for day trading, swing trading, longer term investing, and of course, any of the many asset classes. But what does change for our structure and, and uh, location analysis are the time frames. So if you're a day trader, obviously we're very focused on the smaller time frames and not a lot of them. Right, so your very small time frames, and then for swing trading, which we do a lot of, um, we're typically, you know, our smallest time frame there is typically about a 30-minute chart, but all the way up to uh, all the way up to a weekly chart. Okay, uh, yes, we can definitely take a look at crude oil. Um, let's go look at that, and we'll start with the 60-minute chart here. Okay, because we do have some zones. Well, first off, let's let's so you can 
kind of bigger picture location. For those of you that are in our sessions every day, right, we've been very focused on the 7630 demand zone, which we turned at. But notice we just touched the demand zone there. I can scroll back and show you that if you like. There's that one. And then we have another one, obviously, below it. But let's focus on this one. So we, did, we just touched the demand zone and rallied, suggesting that there's still uh, quite a bit of uh, supply-demand imbalance down here on the demand side. Okay. Now, that's at 76.30, right? That's at 76.30. So now, having said that, we now have a new inside the range demand zone um, right up here in the 79 area. So here's the turn I just showed you. Now we've been inside the range demand zone here. This is almost never going to have the as large of a supply demand imbalance as the one uh, down in here, right? And let, let me give you, because a lot of people don't understand that. So, for example, any, you know, the buy orders that created enough of a supply demand imbalance down here to cause this turn, some are certainly new orders, but, but there's obviously uh, plenty of demand from before in this area, right? But now let me ask you a question. Are the buy orders that created this demand zone, are they new uh, buy orders or are they from, you know, the past? Meaning past all this. Are they new or are they from the past? It's important that you understand the answer to that question. Because a lot of people don't. And I know a lot of you are in these sessions on a regular basis, so hopefully you do. But it's really important. Yes, they are definitely new orders. In fact, they cannot be orders from the past. That, that's impossible. Because if, they, if these were orders from the past, meaning there were a lot of them, they all would have got they would have got filled right here because price came here and then went lower, right? And ultimately turned down here at the 7630 demand. So this new demand zone at 79, these are all going to be new orders. So the likelihood is that there's fewer of them here than there were down here. Or to be more specific, the imbalance is not as great here as it is and was down here. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. And then, um, so that's the demand side in oil. Uh, there's more on the demand side. We can look over here if you want to see another outside the range demand zone. Uh, we have some really good location and structure demand zones starting around the 75, uh, 7335 area. Uh, but of course, we're, we're, we're well above that at the moment. Now, on the supply side, let's go uh, right here. Oh, wrong chart. Let's go over here to the 60 minute. And I thought we had, um, so there's one, there's others we'll look at, but uh, there's the 90, uh, basically the 92, basically 93, 93 to 93.50 or 60 up there. And then I believe we have a closer supply zone. There it is. 86.80. So we're certainly going to be watching the 86.80. Uh, price almost got back to that area here. Okay. And, uh, and there's that. Again, price almost gets back to the zone but doesn't. That's a big clue that we look for, for those of you who have been in our sessions, that... Uh, that there's likely to be a, a, a pretty big supply demand imbalance up there. Remember, the first clue is the zone and the structure location rules, you know, by themselves. But then we get some more evidence right here, right? Okay. Um, okay. Uh, yeah. No, this is... Um, now I'm trying to respond to as many questions in the chat as uh, as possible, and that's why, uh, yeah, Sujan, that's why I've been focused on oil because I think you I think you asked for it. I thought you did. Anyway, someone did. Um, a good question about the trend. So how do we trend trade using supply demand, momentum market, all that? 
you know, we really don't focus on trend at all because if you think of think of the trend trader, right? And we can use our oil demand as an example. The trend trader doesn't buy at demand because because the trend is down, right? Instead, they let prices turn higher. Then the trend trader waits for a series of higher highs and higher lows, and then the trend trader buys. So, you know, trend trading and supply and demand trading are are so vastly different from each other that, uh, you know, and Sam Bragg here in the chat, you're in you're in a lot of our sessions. I mean, how often do you hear the word trend mentioned in any of our in any of our sessions as a member? Um, yeah, never. It's it's not ever in the vocabulary, you know. We have hundreds of members, and uh, the word trend is never mentioned once because it's just. Again, you can you can focus on the turn in price, or you can focus on you know trend trading rules, but you, it's harder. You can't do both because they're so different from each other, right? It's like um, you can have confirmation of a move. Or you can have a low risk entry, but you can't have both. Okay, so um, I'm just answering your uh, your uh, your question there. All right, any other markets? Otherwise, uh, I can uh, keep going through through the list. Ty, absolutely. So the bond markets have been. Um, they came down. So remember, we've been looking at these larger time frame zones, and the 10-year and the 30-year um, came down to these larger time frame demand zones. And since they hit them, 10-year uh, bond prices have rallied. Interest rates have uh, stopped going up a little bit, right? In these markets, in fact, they've come down just a, just a little. Uh, doesn't look like a big move here, but 1030, uh, 1, 10.31 to 112.06 is a, you know, it's a decent move, a little over a full point in the 10-year. The next question would be, how deep did we go into the demand zone? You can see we didn't really go that deep into here. So we uh, we would expect if prices came down here again, we would expect them to turn higher again. As far as shorting the 10-year, got to be real careful shorting anywhere close to this supply zone. You can see here, we did come back to a little you know, five minute day trading supply zone. Yeah, price turned here a little bit, but it's not really doing anything, right? Because this, this whole area is very close to that uh, weekly zone. At the same time, notice we didn't even get down to the demand zone. This is a great picture of location. So on a small time frame, look at what's happening here. And if you're thinking to yourself, well, wait, why couldn't price get down to the demand zone? And why is it going so deep into the supply zone? Right, well, look where we're at in the bigger picture, right? Good luck shorting against that. Probably not going to work. And and why would we want to do that? You know what I mean? IYR, yeah, we can look at that in a moment. Yes. So yeah, the the look. And at the end of the day, too, remember, whatever your strategy is or um, what have you. I mean. Yeah, the, the reason why when I developed the supply demand strategy, you know, I, I developed the, the zones versus like one line for support, one line for resistance, like that was never realistic to me. Um, but, you know, the, 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 the whole point for me of developing the supply demand strategy, you're even right, I wanted to do that uh, for myself and it is because it's, um, you know, it's all, it's, so much of this is about managing the risk. And for me, it's like, okay, where's the low risk entry in any market? Well, it's as close to the turn in price as possible. So from my background on the trading floor, knowing that, you know, having the order is seeing, you know, when price gets down to a level where demand exceeds supply, it stops falling and turn high, turns higher. When it reaches a level where supply exceeds demand, it stops rallying and turn Right, so it's rallying and turns lower. So, okay, that's how and why prices turn in markets. So what does that look like on a price chart? And that's where the supply demand strategy comes from. So it, because if, you know, if, a, if an area doesn't hold up, right, even this 
weekly demand zone in the 10 year. Now it's extremely rare that I, I don't, I, you almost never see, at least I've almost never seen a larger time frame supplier demand zone like that not cause prices to turn. Could it happen? Could. It's just, in, from my experience, it's very rare. Um, but could something happen right now in the news or with the Fed or the Bank of England or the Bank of Japan or something? Could something have some news come out right now that brings in so much supply in this market that price does go lower and through this zone? Is that possible? It is possible. Could something happen that takes the dollar through a fresh weekly supply zone? Not likely at all, but could it happen? Is it possible? It's possible. Some news event would have to come out that's unexpected, that brings in so much demand that there's not enough a supply around the world, right? At that zone, at that level in the dollar that, that prices go through it, okay? So because of that, because of that possibility, then, um, right? Because we all know that there's no guarantees in trading, there's no guarantee that price is going to turn, whatever strategy you use, right? Um, look at the performance of professional hedge funds around the world. The vast majority fail. They're terrible, right? So, so um, but the point is, because there's no guarantee in this, we need to make sure that we're properly managing risk. And the only way I know how to properly manage risk is by focusing on getting in it as close to the turn in price as possible. The further we enter the market away from the turn in prices, right? Like trend trading, for example, um, risk is going up, reward or profit margin is going down. Does that make sense? I know that was kind of a long winded uh, answer, but yeah, and, and to, to finalize that answer, we always want to make sure that we that what it, that we adjust our position size so that you know as you mentioned in the chat we we always need to be okay with the worst case scenario we always need to be okay with the worst case scenario the um remember only one of four things can happen when you enter a trade whether it's a day trade swing trade longer term position what have you Right? There's only four things that can happen. Big loss, small loss, big profit, small profit. Out of those four, as long as we eliminate the big loss, we can totally live with the other three, can't we? We should be able to live with the other three. We just have to be, we have to eliminate or do everything we can to reduce or eliminate the big loss. Whatever we can do to do that. Um, that's the main goal. We can live with the, the small loss. We can live with the big profit. We can live with the smaller profit. But it's that big loss, from my experience, that ends trading careers. And um, so make sure you've got the worst case scenario covered. Make sure you're okay with the worst case scenario. And it's like anything in life, right? Even outside of trading. Think about think of anything in life that you wanted to do that you were afraid to do. Anything. Um, as long as you are okay with the worst case scenario, just figure out, ask yourself what the worst case scenario is. And as long as you're okay with that, go for it. If you're not okay with it, don't. Make sense? I didn't mean to go down that path too far, but that is one of the main things that knocks people out of this trading business. Um, all right, let's keep going here. Um, again, if you want to look at a market, just put it in the chat. We'll take a look at it. Okay, here's copper. So um, again, for those of you that are in our sessions each day, um, you know about these copper zones. I'm just bringing it up here because again, um, even though copper has kind of come back here a couple times, because it's declined, uh, it, it has not moved deep into the zone, we would expect um, uh, price to be able to turn again. We use that rule of 50%. And again, you can adjust that rule however you want. But until price trades halfway into the level or beyond halfway, um, 
you know, we expect it to uh, turn again as long as the profit zone is there. All right. Um, we already looked at, yeah, we took a look at gold. So if you came a little bit late to the session, we spent quite a bit of time on gold, actually. But um, let's go back over here. And let's take a look at uh, some more equity index markets. And again, if you just if you want a market, just type it in the chat. And we'll take a look. So the Russell, we looked at the S&P, looked at the NASDAQ. The Russell is now down into a tested demand zone where it, uh, these are the June lows. And that was all into this outside the range gap demand zone. All right, look at that zone. Structure wise, uh, really, really good. Very little trading gap away from the zone. It's outside the range. Location is good. Okay. Uh, so that zone and uh, we had the same thing in, in the other equity next markets caused the big uh, turn in June. And now we're, we've gapped down into here again. So uh, the profit zone, by the way, is not as large at the moment as you would think. Yesterday, we rallied up and almost reached the gap supply at the 171 area, but couldn't even get there. Almost got there. The NASDAQ got there. The S&P and the Russell and the Dow, I believe, did not. So we're just trading in this range between larger time frame outside the range demand and these inside the range supply zones. But again, notice we're going deeper and deeper into the demand zones. I mean, not, not too deep yet, but we're going deeper. And we're still not even able to get back to the inside the range supply zone. All right, this should this zone should not it should not be hard for price to go through this. Uh, yet this type this zone is holding up. So that again just tells us that there's still you know quite a bit of uh, quite a bit of supply there. Okay. And again. Um, let me just put the link in the chat because I do see some questions. So if you have questions about structure, location, analysis, you can always attend one of these um, free workshops. And um, um, and uh, you know, it's just 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 make sure that you know before you dive into the markets and risk your hard-earned money in the markets. Remember, the majority of active traders lose money according to available research. So be very, very careful. No one's pushing anyone to risk your hard-earned money in the markets. No one's pushing anyone to speed up, okay? Uh, very, very different. Yeah, I, I thought I explained that in quite a bit of detail, but um, you know, in this workshop, if any of you have been in, have any of you been to this workshop yet? There is a section in there where we spend time on that very question, specifically that difference between uh, you know the trend trading and the supply demand strategy anyway there's a link in the chat if you if you want uh, access to the workshop um, and on that note it's good to be with everyone uh, good questions and uh, comments in the chat and um, we will um, we've got a couple couple more sessions coming up in FX Street you can always just look at the calendar all right great to be with everyone and uh, we will see you next time.